Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to a bite-sized Unity tutorial. Today we are going to create a cool object scatter power effect for your game. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help me a part of this channel and you'll find early access and assets and lots of other things there too. You can also now join as a free member. So now, on with the tutorial. So the idea of what I want to create here is the ability to press, for example, the E key and be able to make objects within the scene scatter like some kind of power. Now it's important to note that what I have set up here is just a bunch of cubes, but each of these cubes are going to be impacted by our power. So anything that you want to be impacted by the power that we're going to create, you need to ensure has at least a collider and a rigid body on it. This means that the gravity and the physics will affect these objects. Now I have a player capsule uh, and I have a really crude hand on there as well. So just to give it an effect of like when we use our power, the hand appears on the screen. Obviously yours might look a little bit better than mine, but it's easy to do all of this. And all we need to do is just create a couple of things in the scene and then write a script. So what we first need to create is an empty game object and that will contain the power. Next thing we need to add a game object of the 3D variety, and let's make it a sphere. Uh, this sphere is going to be the power object, and it's going to make everything scatter. So now what we do is if we drag that cube onto our player, so I'm gonna drag it onto the main camera route because I want it to move wherever we look around. I'm now going to zero out the position so as it is in the center of our camera, and I'm going to move it forward and have a look what it looks like in game view. Now what I'm going to do is make it so as we can see whereabouts we want our power to take effect. That means that we need to increase the size of this sphere. So I'm going to increase the scale on the X to probably about 5, on the Z to probably about 7, and that might look a little too big. So what I'm going to do is move it forward, move it down a little bit, and increase the Y to probably 1 or so just so as it's like a big soap bar in front of you. That's all you really need at this point. Next thing to do is to go to add component and then go to physics and add a rigid body to this power object. Next, we need to go down here to where it says constraints. You might need to click the little arrow next to it so you can see constraints and then tick X, Y, and Z on the position and rotation. Now, what this will do is it will freeze this object in the exact place it is in, on your screen. So wherever you look, it will always appear the same. If you didn't have these ticked, it would end up start floating away and doing all kind of crazy things. So let's just make sure that this works as intended for now. What should happen is we should now be able to look around and the big soap bar should stay in front of us at all times. And it does. Now to check if we have the correct setup for the script, what we can do is we can try walking into the objects that we want to be affected. And if they move like that, then it means that our power will work as intended. So next thing to do is turn off mesh renderer on our sphere. And now we need to create a script to make sure this all works. So right click, create, and I've got C-sharp script, but if you're using Unity 6, this may say something like mono behavior script. It's the same thing, so don't worry. Uh, create the script and let's call it power start or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create two variables. One is going to be the hand and the other is going to be the sphere. So let's start by putting in square brackets, serialize field and the type is going to be game object and we'll call this the hand semicolon and once again serialize field game object and this is going to be called let's just call it power sphere semicolon so what we want to do is whenever we have our E key held down, we want to be able to have our sphere on screen and doing something, moving things around. So we can get rid of void start. We don't need it and the annotations. We just need void update. So in void update, we need to check if we're pressing the E key. 
So if, and in brackets, input dot get key down, and that should be in brackets, key code dot e, and then close bracket and open curly bracket. So we've got our if statement open. We just need to put the hand dot set active and in brackets true. And then same again for power sphere. So power sphere dot set active true. We also now need to do the inverse. So when our key is lifted up, we need to turn off that power. We only want it to happen when we've got our key held down. So the next line of code is going to be if input dot get key up and in brackets, you can see it's already predicting what we want to do here, key code dot e, which is correct. And in curly brackets, we put the inverse of what we've got here. So we say the hand dot set active and in brackets, it's going to be false. And then same again with the power sphere. And you can see it's already predicting what we're doing. So we're going to tab and save. So next thing to do is we need to head back into Unity. And obviously, because we have written this script and we want it to do something, we need to apply it to the scene itself. And that's what the first object that we created was for. You could put it on any object that you want, really. But I don't have a designated object in this scene. So that's why I created this power. So drag and drop the script on there. And if we click on it, you can see our two variables. So the first one is going to be the hand. The second one is going to be the power object for the power sphere. And finally, let's turn off the power object. So next thing, let's test it and make sure it works. So if we press play, we should be able to see that the boxes, the cubes might move just a little bit to set them into position. It's not a big deal. That's fine. So now let's press E and our hand does appear on screen. And if you notice in the hierarchy, both the power object and the hand do appear. So let's walk forward now to these cubes and let's try and use our power on them. Ready? There we go. Excellent. And we can do it even more. We can keep going and manipulating them however you want. So every time the hand is on screen, oh, sorry, it lagged out then for some reason. Every time the hand is on screen, you can see that something is happening with the cube. So right up against them, hold E, and there we go. Object scatter. And there's so much you can do with this. You can lift objects up. Just imagine this being some kind of power. Add some effects to it. I know the hand is very crude. It's not perfect. But you can see as I spin around, it's having that desired effect. Obviously, your game is going to look much better than just throwing a bunch of cubes around. Uh, but I'm curious to know if you've used if you use this and let me see your results. Let me see what you've done in your game if you've used this exact method. That would be really, really cool. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this channel. Hopefully, I will see you in the next tutorial.